Good morning. It's tribute time, and I have a couple to read, and I'll start with my own tribute to my father, whom I refer to as my Superman, my hero, the best father there ever was. I am missing you immensely. I somehow thought you would be here forever. I know that was not possible, but a girl can still dream. Each day I would say, today's the day I'm going to receive my miracle on this side of heaven. But God had other plans for you. As I sit writing your tribute, I realize the time we spent together was a gift from God. You were one awesome father. You made sure to provide not only for your children, but your children's children and their children, three generations to be exact, children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. I have been reminiscing about our times together. To say I miss you is an understatement. Princess and I just laughed at the time when you told the nurse, she's not the boss of me. I'm going to miss you giving me a hard time about any and everything. You request a meal cook a certain way that must be ready at noon and not a minute later. I will also miss your storytelling. Boy, could he tell a story. Daddy, I love you. If you have, as you have made your transition, look for mom. She'll be the one calling out to you saying, Big Head Lloyd, you have made it. You reached, sorry. You still owe me $20. And if you know my mother, she wrote it down. Your daughter, Jasmine. This is from his granddaughter, Malia. Daddy, I have been avoiding this. Avoiding accepting this is real. I have so much to say that there's nothing to say. My heart is broken, but I am blessed and honored to be able to experience love like yours. You made everything possible. I don't know where I would be without you guiding me in the right direction. I saw no faults in you, and you saw none in me. Everyone around you adored you. I saw how you treated people and the love they have for you in return. I told you, you, you make my life easier, and I can't wait to pay you back for everything you did for me. Man, what I wouldn't give to hear you say, pay me back? You crazy? One more time. That was our last conversation. Everything you did for each of us, each of us never go unnoticed or without appreciation. I know for sure you're not in pain anymore, but selfishly, I wish I could see you one more time. I know I will see you again and hear your voice again. Thank you for taking me in and never letting me go. I love you, Daddy. This I'll never get over. I miss you and will continue to miss you more and more every single day. I love you, I love you, I love you, Malia J. On behalf of his family in the UK, it says, remembering Uncle Lloyd, our last memories of Uncle was when he came over for his brother Daniel's Joseph funeral. Although it was a sad time, Uncle Lloyd gave us so much jokes to lift our spirits. Uncle Lloyd will be missed, but his spirit lives on in all of us. Uncle had a wealth of knowledge, and we enjoyed listening to his stories about the family when he was growing up. Uncle was a great storyteller. We know how much he loved England and being around family. Also, Cousin Yvonne enjoyed a phone conversation with her uncle reflecting on family memories. Cousin Yvonne was also known as Mummy to Uncle, and he would often talk about Yvonne to the family. Yes, we will miss your sense of humor, Uncle Lloyd, and infectious smile. The Joseph family, the UK. And this poem, this poem is on behalf of them also. It says, Broken Chain. We knew little that morning that God was going to call your name. In life, we love you dearly. In death, we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not go alone, for part of us went with you the day God called you home. You left us peaceful memories. Your love is still our guide. And though we cannot see you, you are always at our side. Our family chain is broken, and nothing seems the same. But as God called us one by one, the chain will link again on behalf of the family in the UK.
Good morning. Lloyd Alfonso Joseph Sr. was born on August 26, 1944, to Samuel and Mary Harley Joseph in Lodge Village, St. Kitts. He was part of his heritage, which he always explained was a mixture of Indian, Portuguese, and Kittitian ancestors. During his developing years, he spent a lot of his time farming and helping, the fam and helping with the family's herd. His church was also important to him. He attended regular service and as an accolade for many years. Rounding out his years in his homeland, he completed his studies and graduated from the 12th standard at Keon High School. Unlike his older siblings who immigrated to England, Lloyd moved to St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands in the early 1960s. He was one of the, he was the only one in St. Croix for a long time until his younger brother Malcolm came to the Virgin Islands. The other siblings remained in England. Luckily, Lloyd was able to visit them, and some of them, in turn, were able to visit him here. Lloyd's employment in St. Croix started at Vista Laboratories, where he worked from 1964 to 1980, when the business closed. Vista Lab was his favorite place to work. There, he assimilated into Crucian culture and made many lifelong friends. From 1980 to 1990, he was employed as a supervisor at Cygnus Corporation, a company that made dye for clothing. He ended his working years employed as a subcontractor at the Hovensa Refinery. Lloyd Joseph Sr. was married to Ermin Joseph. They had been together before 1967 and wed in 1972. It was a marriage that lasted until her death in 2014. They shared seven, seven children. Three of those children were adopted as his own. The family made their home in St. Croix, where most of their children were born and raised. After their children were grown, the couple lived off and on for years in Texas, always remaining, returning to the, to the island. Quiet by nature, Lloyd was a hardworking, dependable man who looked out for his family, especially his children and grandchildren. He was also generous to his friends and acquaintances who needed his help. He was very attentive to his grandchildren, but Malik Jr. and Majai, two of his great-grandchildren, received extra share of his love and attention. They were, were the youngest and lived on St. Croix. He loved them dearly and was very close to them. He considered himself both father and grandfather to them. For most of his life, Lloyd enjoyed listening to cricket on the radio or watching matches on TV. He also liked to fish, always trying to catch the big one or maybe reporting that he had caught the big one. In his later years, his interest shifted a bit. He was no longer able to fish as he was like. On the weekends, it became his custom to watch Billy Graham and other religious programs. But during the week, he watched the news and paid special attention to political activities. He also knew what was going on locally and internationally and enjoyed analyzing political events. It was usually surprising how much he knew about politics and current events. Of course, he took pleasure in discussing those topics. Lloyd had a fantastic memory and he could re recount endless stories from his young days in St. Kitts and his many years in St. Croix. When he was ready, he could, not, he could talk nonstop about his heroes and events in both places. Some of his family members call him a storyteller because they recall him de delineating the lives and times of their ancestors or giving jokes about various stories he knew about. Of course, he, li he liked talking a lot about St. Croix and the host of people he knew on the island. Lloyd Alfonso Joseph Sr. passed away on April 22nd, 2023 in Houston, Texas. At the time of his passing, he was four months away from his 79th birthday. We will miss him dearly. May his soul rest in eternal peace.
faith in Jesus Christ. We see the body of our brother Lloyd on Psalm 7. Let us pray with confidence to God, the giver of life, that he will raise him to perfection in the company of the sick. Deliver your servant, Lord, Lloyd, Lloyd on Psalm 7, Sovereign Lord of Christ. From all evils and set him free from every part, that he may bless all the old days in the eternal habitations. With the Father and the Holy Spirit, in the great way, one God, forever and ever. life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awakening, he will raise me up and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes shall behold him, who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none become his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession.
you please stand? Otis 690, 690. Could you please turn in the hymnal? Unfortunately, the hymns are not printed, and so we're going to have to improvise. So we'll turn to hymn 690 in the hymnal. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to life, grant that your servant, Lloyd Alfonso, being raised with him, may know the strength of his resurrection, the strength of his presence, and rejoice in his eternal glory. For with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Could you please be seated for the Old Testament lesson? First lesson. The Old Testament reading is taken from the Book of Wisdom, chapter 3, reading from verses 1 to 5 and verse 9. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be an affliction, and their going from us to be their destruction 
but they are at peace. For though in the sight of men they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the 23rd Psalm. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Blessed eternal grant to him that light perpetual shine upon. And now the epistle. Revelations 21, 2 through 7. And I saw the holy city, the Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples, and God himself would be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, that will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It's done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to John the 14th chapter beginning at the first verse. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of Christ. Please be seated. There are a number of passages of scripture that are very well known that in our repetition of them over the years we have lost touch with the intentions and meaning. And one such passage is the 23rd Psalm which we just heard a few minutes ago. The truth is that we have become so routine in our lives that we have applied the self-same approach in just about all that we do, including the scriptures. To think on this particular psalm is to wonder as to the conditions of life and the surroundings of the writer that caused him to pen these particular words. And if you and I were to step into the life and mind of the writer, we would certainly conclude that he was facing some turbulent times and circumstances, much like when we lose our loved ones. It is clear that then life was not a bed of roses. The writer was surrounded by unstable times, by disorder, uncertainty, and chaos. Moments that warranted some self-searching and purpose-building or acknowledgement. And yes, he was certainly surrounded by death. He saw the areas of need. He saw need for food, need for shelter, need for clothing, and the likes. And he apparently struggled with these and others. But even as he did, even as he reflected on these, he recognized that his needs were all constantly being met. Being met on a regular basis. And so he wrote, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Would to God, my dear friends, that more of us would be grateful and show such gratitude for having our needs being met in this world. In today's world, there is so much greed that what God provides for many of us cannot quite measure up to our expectations, our wants. And so we shall always be in want. Many of us get jealous. We get jealous over what others have, especially if it is bigger, or if it is a later model, or it is prettier, or of a, of a higher or better quality, or if we think that such persons are not in our class, and so we should get more, or we should want more than them. And as we look further into the mind of the writer, we may very well be convinced that he was living in this, the 21st century, especially here in these Virgin Islands and also in St. Kitts and Nevis where I'm from, where noise seems to be the order of the day. In most of the, well, many of the young people's vehicles, we are bombarded with some strange or alien sounds that the young people call music. Disturbing the peace, if you ask me. And much of this noise is enough to drive a person crazy. 
And it is perhaps such similar circumstances that cause the writer to continue in writing, using these words, he makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. And then even further, reading on in this psalm and picturing the writer in deep meditation, we can notice that he must have been weary and or conscious of the turbulent times around him. Weary of the fightings, the noise, the wars, the cursings, the dangers. He must have been contemplating on the increase in murders, the thirst for revenge, especially among our young people, the stealing and the constant presence of danger in our communities. And he was mindful, he was mindful that despite all of this, God was ever present and watching over him. Something that many young people, especially young men today, cannot say because they live in constant fear that somebody of the opposite gang or some rival person will be out for them. So they cannot think that I can walk without fear. But the psalmist had no fear because God was ever present and watching over him. And so he penned the words, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they bring comfort to me. How could he possibly be thinking about peace and not fearing any evil or comfort when his surroundings are very threatening? And the answer to this is very simple. His experience had shown him that God is and has always been in control. That God is all powerful and nothing absolutely nothing in this world is too difficult for God. And furthermore, the history of his people has shown that God was always ready and willing to fight their battles. You know, some of us, when somebody says something to us, we always feel that we could fire back a response. Nobody going to say nothing to me and me not answer them. You know, one of the hardest things that you can do to somebody who's trying to make an argument with you is to ignore them. Oh, they feel bad. Really, really bad. And some of us need to step back and know that God will fight our battles when we are in the right, not when we're wrong, can be wrong and strong. When we are in the right, God will fight our battles. And no matter how overwhelming the battle, the task, or the threat is, God was always making a way for the psalmist when there seemed to be no way humanly possible. And he will also make a way for us if we trust him. So that is why he could take comfort that even though the shadow of death loomed around him, he had no reason to fear any form of evil whatsoever. And so he reveled in peace, something that many of us in today's world do not have and can't find. He reveled in peace. Not the kind of peace that you and I will offer. Not the kind of peace that comes after a human fought war. Not the peace which comes from a political or business feud. But the peace of God which surpasses all of our understanding. 
That was the kind of peace that this psalmist enjoyed and he was able to write about. The comfort that God's rod and staff brought to his life. My friends, families of our deceased brother, how this world needs peace. How many of our communities need peace. How many of our homes need peace. And perhaps even in this setting, many of us need peace and quiet. You see, there are so many persons who are not satisfied unless they're causing strife and confusion for others. Even in families, in homes. Many persons dwell and they thrive on causing mischief and their tail bearers causing division in communities, in families, in relationships, and even in the church. And such people need to seek after the kind of peace that the psalmist proclaimed. And so too is it evident that in our communities throughout, many of us are troubled by the crime and violence around us. Many of us are troubled with and by the fear of the many shootings, robberies, burglaries, and the continuous loss of life in our midst. I mean, when you really think about it, think about this small territory. And think about the small federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. And to have so many murders before the year is half, something is wrong. We do need peace and comfort. And even in time of loss, Many of us can cling to the past, hoping to recreate what we lost, and we can become depressed and unhappy. We look back and we try to find where things went wrong. And some of us even wish and we long for an opportunity to undo the wrongs or the omissions and even to do it all over again, doing it better this time. And even you, the bereaved family, even you can find yourself despondent and dejected at the loss of your father, brother, uncle, cousin. As you remember who he was and what he was and all the sacrifices that he made on your behalf, only to forget the more important things at hand. Do not dwell so much on the past that you forget that God can shine that light of comfort and peace in your own hearts and lives. And so I wish to bring the words of the writer of the 23rd Psalm to all of us today. And not only because we are here because of the death of a loved one. Not only that. Not only because he is, who will be the next person not to wake up? Who will be the next person not to see another sunlight? The next person to breathe his or her last? The next person may very well be inside here, me or one of you. Who would be the next person to give way to the great beyond? And in the context of what is happening, both in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis and right here in this territory. How many of us are afraid that we may catch the next stray bullet? Or that the next robbery victim may be us resulting in our demise? Or can it be a vehicular accident causing death? Who will it be? Will it be you or me? And if it is any one of us, are we living in fear and discomfort? <clears throat> are we afraid of what we will leave behind? 
Or are we more afraid of what lies ahead of us? That we are not prepared. But I can tell every one of us here today that there is absolutely no need to be afraid, no need to panic, and no need to be unsure. Not if each of us are willing or is willing to place our faith and our trust and confidence in Almighty God like the psalmist. And I do mean placing our faith and our complete trust in God. And having done so, we can say with confidence, despite whatever life throws at us, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not be in want. And then we may wish to add this second part. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for God's rod and his staff. They will bring comfort to me. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you please stand as we turn now to affirm our faith. Please take the black book, the one with the cross, and turn to page 496. 496. And we're going to join together in reciting, reciting the Apostles' Creed. We're not going to race it. We're going to observe the punctuations as we affirm our faith. In the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I need you all to open your mouth. Let's start from the last paragraph again that says, I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We turn to the next page, 497. We remain standing for the prayers. For our brother Lloyd, let us pray to the Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you console Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Lloyd and dry the tears of those who weep. Together, hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. You raise the dead to life. Give to our brother eternal life. You 
you promised paradise to the thief who repented, bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Our brother was washed in baptism, and he was anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of our brother. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life, our hope. Amen. Father of all, we pray to you for Lloyd, Alfonso, and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May his soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Otis, your indulgence again, please. Uh, we sing number 24. 24. Please turn to the hymn number 24. Our offertory hymn. Yeah. 24. Wish. 2 4. standing for the commendation. I want you to turn in your in the prayer books to page 499 499 
in the prayer book. That's the one with the cross at the front. And you're going to make the responses in italics. 499. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your saints, and pain and no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to our resting place. Yet even there we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your saints, where sorrow and pain and no more, neither sign but life everlasting. I'm sure you would know this one now. Let's join together in reciting the Lord's Prayer. Please don't rush it. Together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy. I know the place is hot and you all want to get out, but there's no rush really. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Lloyd. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And now I'm going to have the organist to play the music for what would have been the final hymn as we recess. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus.
I'm helping out this one, but I have the one over at the 